What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, DNDO Commentary. I was kind of struggling on what I should upload today, and then I ran into a pretty interesting duel, and I just decided to uh, commentate this and give you guys this. Anyways, playing against the Dragon Ruler deck, he starts a Ravine, he pitches title, so he's going to um, search Little Dragonity Tuner Guy, which probably tells me he has card of consonants, which is exactly what he plays, so he's going to draw two more cards. So he already has two dragons in his graveyard, and he still has five cards in hand. I've got Maxi, Caius, Night Beam, Swap Frog, Vanity's Fiend. I run three Vanity's Fiend in this deck. I feel like it's a really good card, this format. Uh, one of the problems is Caius is like really good, but it's practically useless in this matchup. It's only good against Xyz or Synchros, and having two of them in my hand isn't the best thing. But anyways, um, he sets one in his back row. I'm going to summon Swap Frog. I just assume... His back row card is like a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, so I'm just like, I don't care. I'm going to either, I'm going to get my Treeborn Frog in the graveyard, and I'm going to get this deck rolling. You know, at the very least, I'm guessing I can Caius his Dragon's Ravine, you know, at least slow him down a little bit. So I'm going to bounce my Swap Frog back to my hand, and then I'm going to Night Beam him, thinking that it's Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Not wanting my Swap Frog, obviously, to be uh, spun to the top of my deck. That would just be awful. It would, it would just put me in a really bad spot. <laughs> so... He has five in his hand. I hit his return with Night Beam, and uh, we're, we're, let's see what, where we're going to go from here. I assume he's probably going to activate Dragon's Ravine again. I don't have any defense, but I do have Max C. That should deter him from trying to go all out. He pitches Flameville Guard for Dragon's Ravine, and I'm thinking he's going to send, like, a, maybe... Okay, so he sends, um, he sends Blaster to the graveyard. So he has Blaster and Tidal in there. And he has two more dragons. So obviously he can summon a bunch of dragons. He can start searching other dragons. He can do what the deck does. He plays another Dragon's Ravine. And you can now see that he's pretty much dumped his entire hand. Like he's invested almost all of his resources into his graveyard. Into a toolbox in his graveyard. He pitches Maxi to um, send Tempest there. And it kind of tells me he doesn't feel threatened by my deck. He's like, alright, you're playing Monarchs. Monarchs is a slow deck. I don't need Maxi against you because you can only do a little bit of damage at one time. So here's my mindset. My, 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 my mindset is I'm going to Maxi him. I do not want this guy special summoning a bunch of monsters even though you know clearly they would all just go back to his hand and I could just sit there. I want him not to special summon because then I can drop Vanity's Fiend on him and all that advantage that he has built up in his graveyard will sit in his fucking graveyard. So I go ahead and I take the neg one. I'm trying to scare him off uh, off special summoning a bunch of monsters and it works out perfectly you know I get Vanity's Fiend which he probably wasn't expecting so now he's gonna eat 2400 damage and he only has two cards in his hand his dragons are being practically useless and you know if he would have summoned Blaster if he would have said alright forget about your maxi I'm gonna summon Blaster when it would have went to his hand he'd have just been able to blow up my Vanity's Fiend so the fact that he left all his dragons in the graveyard man that that couldn't have went where uh, it couldn't have went better so anyways, I've got my Swap Frog. He only has one card in his background. If he doesn't think that I'm going to summon, then he is sadly mistaken. Because, you know, I know that that is probably Phoenix Swim Wind Blast or a bluff. I really don't care either way. I'm trying to push him for damage. He plays with Scarecrow, which was kind of shocking. I was like, um, okay. I, but I guess I'll take the plus one. As long as I have Vanity's Fiend on field, uh, you really can't get all... You can't get this card off the board outside of Dark Hole and Blaster. And if you're, you know, using cards like Swift Scarecrow and taking Neg Ones, then eventually you're not going to have enough cards to pay for Blaster. So I feel like I'm in a really good, um, I feel like I'm in a really good spot. And Gores makes this hand even better because even if he can get rid of the Vanity's Fiend, he can only push for so much. You know, me having the Gores and being at 8,000, it's just really, really good. So it is Phoenix Swim One Blast. You know, he has to pay his cost of uh, the Bree Dragon, which is great, because it's like, all right, well, <laughs> basically, the only thing you can do is use your graveyard now. You have you have only one card in hand, and you have Dragon's Ravine, which I don't even think he activates this turn, because he would have essentially used his entire hand. But here's what's good about my position. Yeah, he can summon Redox, and he can summon, you know, Blaster, or Tempest, or whatever the hell he wants to do, but that's fine, because what I can do is I can drop Gores on him, and I have my enemy controller and Treeborn, so I can obviously, you know, combo those two. I can snatch still the, whatever the biggest card on his field is next turn. You know, I can push in for as much damage as I need. And then even in um, main phase two, I can still do another thousand with Caius, or I can lock him out of special summons with the uh, Vanity's Fiend. So <clears throat> you see that he's going to, um, he triggered his Tempest and his title, which is good because now I'm like, all right, well, at the very least, 
you're probably not going to be able to summon a bunch of dragons this turn. So he's going to attack for just 28 with his blaster, and I'm like, all right, I got gores for that. You know, now I have a token, and you basically have a decision to make because if you don't, I'm just going to snatch through your blaster and I'm going to OTK you. You can see now I'm going to get Treeborn. <clears throat> he plays Torrential Tribute, which was a huge mistake. Uh, the reason this was a mistake is because he already knows that I drew Vanity's Fiend, and I can just get Treeborn back during the, uh, what's it called? I can just get Treeborn back during the standby phase. So. I really haven't lost anything at this point with him only having one card in hand. It's as simple as just resummoning the Vanity's Fiend that he already knew I had. And, I mean, you were already struggling against this card uh, the first time I summoned it. Now you're in an even worse position. So, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to attack with my uh, trusty buddy Vanity's Fiend. And uh, it's going to be his turn. He has 2,200. So, if he can't kill Vanity's Fiend, if he doesn't have Blast or Dark Hole then I would probably say I'm going to win unless he just set something. He doesn't set anything, but um, I take game one. All right, so we're going to the side deck, and he knows that he made a mistake, so, <laughs> you know, everybody makes them. I'm going to side out my uh, my lads because it's just, it, it, it's not really that good against this deck. They have way too many big beaters that can get over lad. Like, as soon as you negate and it becomes... 2300 it's like oh geez it's gonna get ran over so i'm gonna side in the end of anubis which i often will side in against mermil just because if he tries to play the same way where he dumps all his stuff into the graveyard okay well then i can activate i can summon the end of anubis and then none of those guys can activate and you're just you know you're stuck with a bunch of dragons in your graveyard that really can't do anything so as you can see this time i open with dupe frog uh treeborn frog soul exchange vanity's fiend night beam um, this is not a great hand. If I would have went first, this hand would have been fantastic, but it's not really a great hand. And especially considering he already has Blaster, so even if I get Vanity Fiend on board, if he's smart, he'll just hold on to the Blaster and just pop it. You know what I mean? He won't just, you know, pitch it for, like, Dragon's Ravine. And that's exactly what he does. He pitches Tempest instead, and I guess he's like, all right, this guy plays Vanity's Fiend. I'm going to I'm gonna sit on this blaster in case he just happens to summon Vanity's Fiend. So it's already not looking so good for me. And then he's gonna set multiple cards in his back row, which is a problem. Like if Heavy Storm was legal, I'd probably win this game. <laughs> and so I night beam, I uh, blind night beam him, and let's see what I hit. I hit Phoenix with one blast. Again, a card that I believe they play like two or three of now. It's one of the most popular cards in the deck. I don't think that Many players play Regeki Break anymore, strictly because of like Billy Break and a lot of people net deck him. Anyways, so he still has one card in his back row, which if it's returned from the different dimension, um, I practically have no chance of uh, winning this duel. He's going to activate Dragon's Ravine again, and let's see, da, 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 da. I think this time he's probably looking to get like a Tempest in there or something like that. Ah, uh, he sends... He sends, what's it called? He sends that, that little, um, like, union dragon thing. All I know is anytime somebody puts that in the graveyard, they have um, the Bree Dragon, like, 99% of the time. He summons Redox, and again, this would be a great time to have a max C. He's going to banish a couple of dragons, which means he's probably going to search a couple of dragons. So he's already racking up advantage, and uh, he's putting himself in a position to where... He has a bunch of different plays. He can make Star Eater uh, once he summons his debris, which actually he didn't have it. He just he searched it with Tempest, I assume. Yeah, he searched it with um, with Tempest. So you can see he's going to get that little um, Union Dragon guy. And he has a bunch of different plays here. He can make Star Eater. Um, he can go into uh, Ancient Fairy. He can blow up his own ravine, search another copy, then make Dracosack, start popping stuff. You know, Ancient Fairy Dragon is actually a really, really good card. If you, um, it's, it's actually pretty weird. The Dragon Ruler deck has a better matchup against Burn this format than it did last format, strictly because of the interaction between Dragon's Ravine and Ancient, um, Ancient Wyvern. Like, I've actually played Chain Burn against Dragon Rulers, and I lost because of Ancient Wyvern, because he kept using that effect over and over again, and, you know, he ended up having some thousand, or something like 10,000. Uh, life points that I need to burn through and I think I did like 8,800 damage in the duel, but in uh, anyways So you can see he's gonna play ravine again And it's like man this dude is just toolboxing 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 and you can see with my hand It's gonna be pretty difficult 
just to get rid of one uh, Draco sack, let alone the fact that he's loading up his graveyard so that he can just summon another one next turn anyway. And then even if I somehow get Vanity Fiend on board, I mean, I'm just going to lose it out to a blaster anyway. And then then I'd probably be looking at getting OTK. So, um, yeah. He sets a couple of cards, or he sets another card in his back row. Now, here's the thing. Obelisk the Tormentor changes things a lot. <laughs> because Obelisk the Tormentor, I don't have to care about uh, your whistle. I don't have to care about your Blaster. Blaster was the card that I could not play around. And uh, now I have a way to play around it. You know what I mean? Now, if I throw Obelisk on there, you know, he's already used one Debris Dragon. I mean, I guess... He could still Black Rose me or something like that, but, I mean, he'd have to, you know, do his normal summon. He'd have to use Tempest again. I mean, he'd have to do a lot of stuff. That's all I'm saying. So, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to special my Swap Frog. I'm going to pitch Rona Toten into the graveyard. I'm going to activate Soul Exchange, obviously wanting to get rid of Draco Sap. Soul Exchange isn't fantastic in this matchup because, for the most part, it's, it's best used with Obelisk. Like, that's really the main use. If you keep your lads in... It's pretty decent, but for the most part, um, best use is basically with Obelisk. Like, it doesn't really work that well outside of Obelisk. <clears throat> you can see that I'm going to uh, banish my Duke Frog for uh, my Ronin Toad. And, and again, I'm basically banking on Obelisk, but with his current position, Obelisk really isn't the be-all, end-all. And I say that because if he banishes Tempest uh, to summon an, uh, another dragon then he can just get the Bree Dragon from, um, he can just search out the Bree Dragon. And when he searches the Bree Dragon, he can just clearly make a Black Rose. And he sees that I only have two cards in hand, so I'm kind of running low on advantage, and I think that it would be advantage him. You know, if he torches the field right now, yeah, he uses his back row, but that Obelisk is the main, like, that's the main thing. And the fact that he played Seven Star Sword tells me that not only is he going to get a fresh hand, but he's going to get, he's going to go plus one anyway. So, if I'm him... I'm probably thinking, all right, I'm going to banish Ancient Wyvern and Tempest to summon, I don't know, a Redox in defense mode, and then I'm going to make, uh, what do you call it? I'm going to I'm gonna search out Debris Dragon, I'm going to blow this field up, and then I'm just going to hope that I can out-advantage him from there. You know, he couldn't imagine that I have double Vanity's Fiend, and even if I did have double Vanity's Fiend, he, has, he still has Blaster anyway. Like, the Blaster is, his Blaster in hand is just holding down my Vanity's Fiend. So he has three cards in his back row, and this is why I say, man, if Harry's soul was legal, I'd fuck him up right now. I'm going to summon Treeborn Fog. Now, there's a piece of me that always thinks about Torrential Tribute, <laughs> and I, I actually thought about that. I was like, maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't summon the Treeborn. You know, I'm always a little hesitant because of Torrential Tribute, and he has 18 cards in deck. I'm like, what are the possibilities, you know what I mean? Because that's obviously why I didn't just go Vanity's Fiend. I'm like, man, if he has Torrential, I'm going to auto-lose. So you can see that he pitches his title. He's going to activate Ravine. I don't know what he's going to search. He's probably, yeah, he's searching Dragoonity Tuner Guy. I'm thinking right here, all right, he's going to activate Card of Constant. He's going to draw some more cards or whatever. As soon as he summoned, I already knew what it was. I was like, he's going to Torrential me. Yep. <laughs> and that's that's exactly what he did. Because what, what would making Formula Synchron do in this situation? Making Formula Synchron doesn't do anything. So, I mean, he already had outs to my Obelisk and Debris Dragon, which he would, uh, I would imagine, search with uh, Tempest. Most people play two Debris Dragons, but um, for him to go to retro Tribute on me, it's just, uh, it made things even worse. He's going to summon the big guy. He's going to summon the Blaster, which I actually think is a mistake here because he should keep Blaster in his hand in case I abandon these fame. Like, you know, he can make Draco Sack, and that's all great and everything, but... What if I just happen to have an enemy controller? Although I guess he could be thinking, you know, if he has a Phoenix with one blast set down there, then, you know, it doesn't really matter if I get Vanity Scene or it doesn't really matter what I do at that point. The uh, Phoenix with one blast will counter whatever the hell it is I'm trying to do. So he's just searching a bunch of cards. He's making a bunch of advantage. He's going to attack for 26, 28. What is that? Uh, 64 total. Something like that, and um, I'm basically just going to look at my next card, and if it's not something fantastic, I'm probably just going to scoop it up. If he makes a Draco Sack, I basically have no way to get around it. Vanity's Fiend is not up to par. You know, I needed that Obelisk to live, and the fact that he had the Torrential Tribute uh, just kind of ruined my day. You know, this deck can't make, or the uh, the Dragon Ruler deck can't make Cataster. It, it, you know, a lot of times they don't run Dark Hole, so, you know, um, he had he had the one out that he needed, and, you know, that's fine. 
He gets his two tokens. He sets another card in his back row. I drew MST, but I'm just going to scoop. I, I can't come back. Now, here's the thing. I'm obviously citing out the Caiuses, which I should have done in uh, game two. He's, he kept setting back row, and I'm thinking to myself, this dude is overcompensating. He's, he's setting so many cards. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and side in my Genzos. I'm going to do it. I'm going to side out my end of Anubises because they seem a little slow. Like, they don't seem proactive enough. And I'm trying to think. I'm going to side in these Twisters strictly for Dragon's Ravine. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think that's the only thing I can hit. But if I hit Twister early, that means I can stop Dragon's Ravine, which is the card that pretty much it keeps the deck rolling. You know, it's, it's like it, it gives the deck the snowball effect. So looking for a good hand here. Let's see what happens in game three. And I drew Genzo, Treeborn Frog, Enemy Controller, Maxi, Duke Frog, and Obelisk. This is a fantastic hand against this deck. I thought about it for a second here, and I was like, do I set Duke Frog or do I set Treeborn? And I ultimately decided on Treeborn because, you know, if it if it got killed turn one, then it would obviously set up for a really nice enemy controller play. You know what I mean? So I felt like Treeborn was just a little bit better option. He plays Seven Sword, and he's going to pitch uh, title, so he's already making advantage. But with my hand being so strong, I still feel like I'm in a really good position. You know what? I actually, I actually want him to invest monsters on board because... Uh, me having Econ, I'm, you can clearly see that I'm looking to get an obelisk play started here. <clears throat> so he sets one card in his back row, and I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating him to play like a Dragon's Ravine and start pitching monsters, but he didn't. So uh, one card is not worthy of me summoning Genzo, so I'm just going to set my Deep Frog and be content. As soon as he kills Deep Frog, I'm just going to search out Swap Frog. He plays yet another Seven Sword. This time, um, this time it's Tempest that he's going to pitch. And he has, God, what is that, like eight cards? One, two, three, okay. <laughs> they shuffled. Yeah, I, I think I think it's eight cards right now. You know what I mean? So this dude has so many cards, at least one Tempest, at least one title. You can see that he's activating titles effect. He's pitching his titles for, let's see, he puts Blaster into the graveyard. So at this point... Vanity's Fiend's looking pretty nice. He's doing it again. He's uh, he's dumping all of his hand into his back row. Now, when he set that second card, that was it. I was like, fuck that. I'm not about to let you sit here and rack up a bunch of cards in your back row. I'm taking this for... I'm taking the 2400 damage if you're going to just sit there and give it to me. You know, I don't care if you summon Blaster and run over my Genzo. I'm going to snatch still that Blaster, and then I'm going to use that shit against you, and I'm probably going to drop Obelisk at some point in the process. You know, so I'm thinking, all right, well, you know, I'm just going to chill with this Genzo because I know that that's a Phoenix from One Blast, or if that's a Torrential, then you know what? Screw that. You've been doing all this trap nonsense before, and I'm not having it this time. And that's why he says more unexpected cards. Like, <laughs> could you imagine playing against Frog Monarchs and they side Genzo <laughs> against you? <laughs> a deck that is not supposed to be reliant on traps at all, but I just had a feeling. I had a feeling that that this guy was either going to lose or win be based off his traps. And uh, I felt like Genzo was going to give me an edge. So you can see he plays Dragon's Ravine. Um, he pitches Tempest. And let's see. I think this time, yeah, he's going to send. And I think Redox is the only dragon not in his graveyard. So I would assume he's going to summon Redox. And again, I have Max C in case he tries to go a little nuts. Now, he summons little Union Dragon Guy, or he puts dra the Union Dragon Guy in the graveyard, which was perfect, because now, instead of him, instead of me having to worry about him using a big dragon to run over my Genzo and then stopping, he gave me the perfect card to use Max C on, because now I'm just going to chain Max C, I'm going to draw one off the, uh, the car off of the little uh, Union Guy, but now I put him in a position, okay, even if he, even if he um, synchros, I mean, what's he gonna do? Blow up the field with Black Rose? I don't care. I mean, he can make ancient, uh, he can make ancient Wyvern, or I'm sorry, ancient Fairy Dragon, but it doesn't advance his position. Not to mention, I have Enemy Controller. I got two of them actually, so I'm in a great position because now I'm looking at, I'm gonna snatch steal, I'm gonna snatch steal your, um, your ancient Fairy Dragon, and then I'm going to what's it called? Then I'm gonna tribute clearly for Vanity's Fiend. So I'm in a good position. It sucks that he gained a thousand life points because that actually, uh, that, 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 it, it does matter in the grand scheme of things. You know what I mean? Especially considering that they just get to replace the Dragon's Ravine. I mean, 
you don't get the uh, maybe in the late game it might matter, but in, in the mid in the mid game early game it doesn't really matter if you burn through you know one of your uh, ravines quickly. So I'm trying to think of all my options, and you can actually see right now the Genzo is actually helping a lot because. If those happen to be a Torrential or a Phoenix Moon Windblast, you know, my Econ plays, they're fairly safe. I don't have to worry about summoning into back row because, you know, I already have uh, the, the appropriate counter. <clears throat> I was actually hoping that he might summon a dragon, but he didn't do that. So you can see that I'm looking to take Ancient Fairy Dragon with my enemy controller. And, uh, yeah, I'm using Treeborn, obviously. He thinks, he's like, well, what are you attributing? And I'm like, isn't it pretty obvious that I'm attributing Treeborn? I looked at my graveyard. Here's the interesting thing. If I actually had, um, what do you call that thing? Draco Sack. I could have actually summoned it this turn. I could have tributed um, Ancient, or I could have tributed uh, Swap Frog and um, something else. No, wait, wait. I'm fucking up. <laughs> Sorry, just disregard that. Anyways, you can see that I went for it all. I, I, tried to, I tried to just go for game, and he had the Swift Scarecrow. Which kind of sucks because, you know, it puts me in a position to where I just have to wait another turn. I have no idea why I put my Duke Frog in attack mode. That 100 would not have mattered at all. You know, I think that it was a math fail right there. But in the grand scheme of things, I kind of want my Duke Frog to die because then I can get Swap Frog. I can get a monster that, you know, if I already have... Um, if I already have Vanity's Fiend on board, I can get a monster that I can push in for a thousand damage. Then I can bounce it to my hand. You know, it extends my place. Now, here's the good thing. In the grand scheme of things, I'm not in a terrible position because I do still have an enemy controller. Here's the thing, though. I could enemy controller. I could get rid of my Duke Frog, and I could try and take his Ancient Fairy Dragon again, and I could try pushing in, you know, for game that way, the problem is if he happened to have another scarecrow, um, then I'd probably just it, that would just cause a lot of problems. And actually, now that I think about it, if he pops his ravine, which he just did, I think I, I don't even think those three monsters together. Yeah, I can't kill him now. I can't OTK him even if I snatch steal his um his uh his fairy dragon with enemy controller because now he's at 76 and that would be what 69. So, yeah, he's above it. So, again, that 1,000 actually did become relevant. <laughs> so, it's um it's not that big of a problem because I can enemy controller it into attack mode, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But um it does give him a couple of more turns. Like, it gives him another turn to, you know, potentially draw an out, draw a blaster for Vanity's Fiend or something like that. You know, but I hate blasters so much. I swear, Blaster is just that dude. I mean, if you have any problems in Yu-Gi-Oh, like, get on your cell phone and call Blaster, and I promise you that dude will take care of it. But you see, I'm just going to run over his um his Fairy Dragon. I'm going to attack with Jinzo. And um, <laughs> I thought about it for a second, and then I was like, wait, what the hell am I doing? Put that monster in defense mode. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set my MST. The second he tries to activate Ravine, I'm just probably going to MST it. But, uh, yeah, outside of Blaster, I feel like I'm in a great position. You can't use your traps, which means you can't Phoenix when one blasts my Vanity's Fiend, which you have done before. And you can't special summon anything because I have Vanity's Fiend. So, I mean, at this point, to me, it seems like Blaster or Bust, you know. Uh, it, it seems kind of clear that he does not play Dark Hole. Otherwise, I believe that he would have drawn it by now. But um, I'm in a good position. And then, you know what, I have Obelisk to kind of fall back on. <clears throat> so I drew Night Beam, which I'm going to activate. I'm going to see what that face down was. Phoenix and Wombat, I'm calling it now. Oh, Debunk. Okay, that's interesting. That would have gotten rid of one of my Treeborns, obviously. Or that would have gotten rid of Treeborn. That would have sucked. Um, he's setting cards in his back row. So, or he's setting monsters uh, face down, but little weak monsters. So that tells me that I have him kind of on the ropes. And um, he's at 25. So <laughs> it's kind of ironic if he does that again. I'm actually going to need that dude frog to attack. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so he does it again. He's setting monsters, and I'm thinking, alright, it's the Bree Dragon. He tries to set another card in his back row. I'm thinking it's a bluff. I MST it immediately. It's six cents, the, the spawn of Satan right there. And again, I'm just going to try and go in for damage here. I attack with his face down. He rolls a die for some apparent reason. I still have no idea why. And he ends up scooping... It probably was Debris Dragon or something like that. He couldn't special summon, and he didn't have the blaster, so I guess he just scooped it up. 
So thank you guys for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this duel. More duels to come. See you later.